Welcome back, and in this lesson, we will go over the Deferred Revenue Liability. The Deferred Revenue is a prepayment from a customer for future goods or services. Deferred Revenue is a liability because we owe to the customer. The service or product has not been delivered yet, and therefore we cannot recognize the revenue. We collected the cash, but the products will be delivered in the future, so until that happens, we have a liability before the customer to deliver the product or service. The deferred revenue can be a current liability, but it can also be a long-term liability. If the revenue associated with the deferred revenue is expected to be recognized within the current year, then it is going to be a current liability. Otherwise, it will be a long-term deferred revenue liability. Deferred revenue is common for all companies, but a significant deferred revenue liability is typically accumulated by companies that have a business model where they require upfront payment in exchange for their service or products. These are companies that operate in the airlines, software, or insurance industries. So how do we account for the deferred revenue liability on the balance sheet? Since it's a balance sheet item, we always start with an opening balance. Next, we add the item that increases the deferred revenue balance, which is a prepayment from the customer. Since deferred revenue is revenue whose recognition has been delayed until we deliver the service or product to the customer, the revenue recognized related to the prepayment that we received for the product or service will decrease the deferred revenue's balance. So, the deferred revenue opening balance plus the prepayment from the customer less the revenue recognized will give us the deferred revenue balance at the end of the period. Note that the prepayment is a cash item and therefore will be reflected in the cash flow from operations section in the cash flow statement, as we will see shortly. Revenue recognized is revenue that will appear on the income statement. And finally, the deferred revenue balance at the end of the period will go to the balance sheet as a liability. Let's review an example of deferred revenue so we can get a better understanding of what deferred revenue is. Suppose that a software company sold a subscription to their product for four months. So they sold two subscription products, the first one at the beginning of month one for 100, and then the second one they sold at the beginning of month three for 100 as well. The company received cash up front, so they received cash at the beginning of month one when they sold the first subscription, and then at the beginning of month three when they sold the second subscription. Our task is to show when the revenue is recognized and how do we account for the deferred revenue balance over six months. And we have to assume that the deferred revenue balance at the beginning of month one is zero. So what we're gonna have in our calculations is a subscription sold, cash received, revenue recognized, and deferred revenue balance in each month over six months. Below our main calculations, we will also have auxiliary calculations and the auxiliary calculations will be for the deferred revenue balances, so we can keep better track of what's happening with the deferred revenue balance. We will begin the deferred revenue balance calculations with the deferred revenue opening balance. Then, the subscription sold will increase the deferred revenue balance because the subscription that the company sells is valid for four months, according to the instructions, which therefore generates deferred revenue liability for four months. So, Every time the company sells the subscription to their product, deferred revenue balance goes up. Next, the revenue recognized will decrease the deferred revenue balance because revenue associated with subscription sales will cycle out of the deferred revenue balance and will appear on the income statement. So, we start with the opening balance, we add the subscription sold, and then we deduct the revenue recognized to arrive at the deferred revenue ending balance. Let's begin the calculations. We know that at the beginning of the first month, we sold the first subscription to the customer for 100. We received cash up front, so our cash received will be 100 as well. The revenue recognized will only be 25 because we know that the subscription is valid for four months. So we have to spread this 100 received for the subscription over four months. And now we will go into our auxiliary calculations where we will calculate the deferred revenue balance. The deferred revenue opening balance is zero, and that is the assumption given to us in the instructions. We sold the subscription for 100 in the first month, and we recognized 25 as revenue in the first month related to the subscription sales. So our deferred revenue balance will be 75 at the end of the first month, which is the opening balance plus the subscription sold for 100 and less the revenue recognized of 25. 
this deferred revenue balance of 75 will flow to our main calculations in the first table. In the second month, we did not sell any subscriptions, and therefore our subscriptions sold will be zero. Cash received will be zero as well since we did not sell any subscriptions in month two. We will recognize revenue of 25 because, remember, we have to spread the value of the subscription sold of 100 over four months. So we're going to be recognizing revenue of 25 related to the first subscription sale. And again, we have to go to our auxiliary calculations. Our opening balance in the second month will be 75. Why? Well, because the opening balance is always equal to the ending balance in the previous period. The subscription sold will be zero since we did not sell any subscriptions in the second month and the revenue recognized will be 25, which is coming from our main calculations. So starting with the opening balance of 75, adding a subscription sold of zero and deducting the revenue recognized of 25 will give us the deferred revenue ending balance of 50. This deferred revenue ending balance will flow to our main calculations, so our deferred revenue will be 50 in the second month. In the third month, we again sold the subscription, we will assume to another customer for 100. So we received cash of 100. What will be our revenue recognized in the third month? We know that we still have to recognize the revenue related to our first subscription sale, which was in the first month, and that revenue will be 25. On top of that, we've now sold the second subscription to the second customer, so we have to recognize the revenue related to our second subscription sale as well. And the revenue related to the second sale will be 25 again, because the second subscription sale will be spread over four months as well. So the total revenue recognized in the third month will be 50. We have to go to our auxiliary calculations and we start with the opening balance of 50. And that's the ending balance that we've got in our previous period. We sold a subscription in the third month for 100 and we recognized revenue of 50. So our deferred revenue ending balance in the third month will be 100, which is 50 plus 100 and less 50. So this ending balance of 100 will flow to our main calculations. In the fourth month, our subscription sold and cash received will be zero since we did not sell any subscriptions and therefore did not receive any cash. The revenue recognized will be 50 again, and this is 25 related to the sale of the first subscription and 25 related to the sale of the second subscription. Now let's go to our auxiliary calculations. And here we start with deferred revenue opening balance of 100, which is the ending balance in the previous period. We did not sell any subscriptions in the fourth month, so it is zero. The revenue recognized is 50, and therefore the remaining deferred revenue balance will be 100 plus zero and less 50, which will be 50. So the deferred revenue balance at the end of the fourth month will be 50. In the fifth month, we did not sell any subscriptions, so the subscription sold and cash received will be zero. Revenue recognized will be 25. Why? Well, remember that our subscription is for four months, so the first subscription that we sold for 100 was spread over four months, and therefore we now have fully recognized the revenue associated with the first subscription sale. We recognized 25 in the first month, 25 in the second month, 25 in the third month, and 25 in the fourth month, so there is no revenue left to be recognized, which is related to the first subscription sale. Therefore, our revenue drops to 25, which is revenue associated with the second subscription sale in the third month. In our auxiliary calculations, the deferred revenue opening balance will be 50, the subscription sale is zero, and the revenue recognized is 25. So deducting 25 from 50 will give us a deferred revenue ending balance of 25, which will flow to the main calculations, and therefore, we're going to have a deferred revenue balance of 25 at the end of the fifth month. In the sixth and final month, we did not sell any subscriptions, so the subscription sold and cash received will be zero. Revenue recognized will be 25, and now we have fully recognized revenue associated with the second subscription sale as well. Let's go to our auxiliary calculations to finish the deferred balance calculations. We start with a deferred revenue opening balance of 25. We did not sell any subscriptions, so it will be zero. The revenue that we recognized is 25, and therefore our deferred revenue ending balance will be zero, which is the opening balance of 25 less the revenue recognized of 25. So now we have fully recognized the revenue associated with the subscription sale in the first month and the subscription sale in the third month. 
if we take a look at the total of the subscriptions sold, cash received, and the revenue recognized over six months, we're going to see that the total of the subscriptions sold is equal to 200 because we sold two subscription products for 100 each. Total cash received will also be 200. That is how much we received from our customers in cash payments. And the total revenue recognized is 200 as well. Well, because this is the revenue associated with our subscription product sales, except we recognize the revenue over four months for each subscription product sold. So, this is basically the accounting of a deferred revenue liability. Now let's take a look at the example of how deferred revenue liability is reported on the airline's balance sheet. And we're going to be looking at Delta Airlines, one of the largest airlines in the United States. We can see that Delta has something called air traffic liability in the current liabilities, and it was $4 billion in 2020, somewhat lower than the air traffic liability of $5 billion that Delta recorded in 2019. Obviously, one of the reasons is COVID-19 and air travel restrictions because of it. We can see in the footnote called Ticket that Delta Airlines says that the air traffic liability primarily includes the sales of passenger tickets to be flown in the future. So what happens is that the airline sells you the ticket, they collect the cash, but until you take that flight, this transaction will be recorded as a deferred revenue liability. And in the case of Delta Airlines, it is called air traffic liability.